a passage of scripture that really is crucial for me it comes out of the 8th chapter of Romans, the 14th verse. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. There's more to being a Christian than just believing the right stuff, than just having the right doctrines, uh, having your head in the right place. To be Christian, you must open yourself up and invite the Spirit of God to invite Jesus, to invite the Holy Spirit to invade you, to possess you, to take possession of you, and here's the phrase, to lead you. Are you willing to surrender to the Spirit and allow the Spirit to flow into you, take control of you, and lead you? Because if that happens, no matter what goes on around you, you'll know that all things will work together for good in the economy of God. Let me tell you about some people I know who are led by the Spirit. A friend of mine, his name is Al Whitaker, came down for breakfast one morning. He was the CEO of one of the Fortune 500 companies. His wife looked across the table and said, Al, is this what you want to do the rest of your life? I mean, you're primarily helping rich people to get richer. I mean, it's a good thing, I guess, but is this what you want to do? That night at supper, he looked across the table at her and said, that question you asked me this morning was so troubling. You should know that when I left the office today, I handed in my resignation. He started an organization called Opportunity International. This is an organization that prepares people to go to third world countries, to go to places like the slums of Manila, or the barrios of Bogota, or, or the slums of Haiti, or the forgotten places of the world where so many people suffer and die. He, he goes to those places, and he starts small businesses, cottage industries. For years at Eastern College, the students that graduated from a special program we had there were trained to go and work with Al Whitaker, to work starting small businesses and cottage industries among the poor. In 10 years, are you ready for this? In 10 years, Al Whitaker and those working with him generated two and a half million jobs among the poor and the oppressed of the world. Now, if you figure there's six people to a family in the third world country, when you create two and a half million jobs, you have to take two and a half million and multiply it by six. And then you have some idea as to how many millions of people have been delivered from poverty, not for a day, not for a week, not for a year, but for the rest of their lives. He was a man who said, I'm going to be open to the Spirit of God. I'm going to allow Jesus to invade me, to possess me, to take possession of my being. And he changed. And the world has been changed because of him. Another friend of mine, Millard Fuller, called me many years ago and said, I want you to be on a board. I said, for what? He said, we're going to build houses for poor people. I said, that's, that's good. He said, not only are we going to build houses for poor people, but they're going to be able to buy these houses with no down payment. I said, that's terrific. That's what usually keeps poor people from buying houses. He said, beyond that, they're going to have long-term mortgages and no interest on the mortgages. I said, that's wild. I'm buying a house, and most of what I pay in any given payment is, is for interest. He said, that's right. But the Hebrew Bible says that you should never charge interest to poor people, so we're not going to do that. And uh, one thing more, when these people buy these houses, these poor people, they're only going to have to pay for the cost of building materials. I said, Miller, that's wonderful except for one thing. Who's going to pay for the labor? Who's going to pay for the workers? He said, no problem. I'm going to get church people to volunteer. I said, right. 25 years later, Habitat for Humanity has completed 100,000 houses. Did you hear that? 100,000 families delivered from substandard housing, living with some degree of dignity, because this man was led by the Spirit of God, led by Jesus to do something incredibly important with his life. You know, when the hurricane blew through Homestead, Florida some years ago, blew down every home in Homestead except for the 18 houses that were built by Habitat for Humanity. When the press interviewed Millard, uh, they said, how do you account for this? How come the houses built by Habitat stood when all the others were blown down? He smiled and he said, well, you have to understand that when Habitat builds a house, we build a house on the rock. And I watched as these reporters wrote it down. They didn't get it. 
But of course it's deeper than that. The real reason why the houses didn't blow down is because the people who built them, these church volunteers, they didn't know what they were doing. You see, a builder knows you put a, you know, a piece of wood in place, you put a vise in place, you put five nails here and five nails there. That ought to hold the beam. But the habitat builders, they don't know what they're doing. So they put 20 nails here and 20 nails there. If the foundation requires this much cement, they put in that much cement. Every house they built is overbuilt. And so when the storms came, other houses might have blown down, but their houses stood. It's an incredible story of a man who had a vision, a vision that was given to him by God. He'll tell you that. He'll tell you how at a particular point in his life, he opened himself up and asked the Holy Spirit to invade him, possess him, take possession of him, and lead him. For as it says in Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Now, you're probably saying, I'm not a Millard Fuller. I'm not an Al Whitaker. I can't do fantastic stuff like that. Well, let me tell you one last story. It's about a friend of mine who had a deacon in his church. He tried to get the deacon to really open up and let the Spirit of God lead him, and finally the deacon concluded that there was one thing he could do. He could take the youth group to the old folks' home. Once a month, the youth group of this church went to the old folks' home and put on a little church service for the people that were there. He went with the youth group. He stood in the back of the room. The young people were performing, and this old man in a wheelchair rolled over, rolled his chair over to where this deacon was standing, took hold of his hand, and held it all during the service. That was repeated the next month, and the next month, and the next month. Then they went one Sunday afternoon, and the man wasn't there. The deacon asked the uh, nurse in charge, what happened to that man? Oh, she said, he's near death. He's just down the hall, third room. Maybe you should go in and visit him. Uh, he's, he's unconscious, though. The deacon went down, walked into the room, and, you know, there were tubes, and you know how people are when they're just about gone, and lying there it was quite an ugly scene. The man went over and took hold of the hand of the gentleman in the bed. He said a prayer, just instinctively, led by the Spirit. He said a prayer. And when he said amen, the old fella squeezed his hand. He was so moved by that squeeze of the hand that he, he began to weep. He, he shook a little. He, he tried to get out of the room, and as he's leaving the room, he bumps into this woman who's coming into the room. And she says, he's been waiting for you. He said he did not want to die until Jesus came and held his hand. And I tried to tell him that after death, he would have a chance to meet Jesus and talk to Jesus and hold Jesus' hand. But he said, no, once a month, Jesus comes and holds my hand. And I don't want to leave until I have a chance to hold the hand of Jesus once more. I tell you that story because to be led by the Spirit may bring you into doing things as awesome as Al Whitaker and Millard Fuller. Maybe so. But even if you can't do that, if you yield to the Spirit, there's something, something very, very important that God wants to do in you and through you. It might be just as simple as this. To go someplace and to hold somebody's hand. To be Jesus for somebody. That's what Christ wants of us. Not just to have us believe in him. He wants us to be people who surrender to him, who yield to him, and are transformed by him. He wants to take hold of us and lead us. Every year in America, I, I recruit some hundred young people and say, look, will you give Jesus a chance? Will you let him take possession of you? Will you let the Holy Spirit invade you? Will you let the Holy Spirit be a presence in you? And... Uh, they come and work with us. We're working in four cities now in a program called Mission Year. And what they do is rather undramatic. They don't run any great programs. They simply go door to door in these poor neighborhoods, knock on the doors, and when people answer, they say, we're here to do one thing. We want to pray God's blessing on you. 
and on the people that live in the house with you. We let us do that. Even the agnostics say, well, you know, if it'll make you feel any better, go ahead. And on the doorsteps of houses throughout Oakland, Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta, they pray for people. They pray God's blessing on people. I meet with these young people from time to time, and the stories they tell are remarkable. They talk about knocking on doors and elderly people coming and saying, oh, I'm so depressed. I'm, I was hoping somewhere, someplace, somebody would pray for me, and you've come. They've touched so many lives. Not doing anything fantastic, nothing that is newsworthy that's going to make the front page of the newspapers. Just 100 young people going door to door, praying God's blessing on those who answer. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. So I have a question to ask. Here's the question. Do you want to be upbeat in this downbeat world? Do you want to have a sense of joy and excitement and enthusiasm? Then do this. Invite the Spirit of God to invade you, possess you, control you, and listen, lead you. For there is joy in following the leading of Jesus. St. Francis knew that. Millard Fuller knew that. Al Whitaker knew that. I know that. And if you give the Spirit of God the chance to lead you, you'll know it too. God bless you.